Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will learn about self induction and mutual induction. And we will also explain example number 13.2 solved in the book. And we will solve the practice problem 13.2. Now, uh, I am sure you have learned the concept, but we will just repeat what is self induction. This, when the current I1 is flowing in the primary, there will be a voltage induced in this coil or L1. So this voltage will be called self-induced voltage and it will be equal to I1 and this impedance. And at the same time when a current is flowing in I2, there will be a voltage induced in this and that will be the self-induced voltage due to how it too. But at the same time, this, the flux produced by this coil will also get interacted with the coil L1 and therefore a voltage will be produced due to this current I2 in coil L1 and that voltage is called the mutual induction voltage. And similarly, when current I1 was flowing, there will be a voltage induced in the second coil and that will also be called the mutual induced voltage. So the total voltage and you can see here we have tried to show the mutual induced voltage here and then the other voltage drops in L1 and L2. So we will discuss this. So the total voltage V1 will be the voltage drop in this so that is L di by dt or L1 di1 by dt plus this mutually induced voltage due to current I2 so plus M di2 by dt so this is the mutually induced voltage so this is a general uh, uh, way of representing voltage V1 and same way we can represent voltage V2 which is the uh, induced voltage in this and plus the mutually induced voltage due to I1. So it will be L2 Di2 dt plus M Di1 dt, so mutually induced voltage. Okay, uh, we will be frequently moving from time domain to frequency domain or phasor domain. Uh, the name phasor domain and frequency domain are interchangeably used. So in the time domain an inductor L will become J omega L in the frequency domain or phasor domain. And similarly DI by DT in time domain will become J omega and phasor I or capital I in the phasor domain or frequency domain. Okay, now let's see the circuit, same, uh, same voltage, same resistance, same coil. This is the representation in time domain, so current I, small i1, voltage is also represented by small v, but so this is a time domain representation. When we go to phasor domain, this voltage will be become now capital V1 in phasor domain, the resistance will remain same but the inductor will now become J omega L1. From here L will become J omega L, so this will become J omega L1 and similarly the other inductor will become J omega L2 and the currents will also become I2 here and the voltage V2. So this is same circuit represented in uh, two domains, time domain and frequency domain or phasor domain. And now if this, in this circuit as we mentioned that there will be a voltage induced here due to this current I flowing in this coil L2 because of the magnetic flux linkage and so this will be represented by M Di2 dt and we, we represent by it by a small box so we don't forget to add this. And similarly, the mutually induced voltage due to this current will be M Di1 dt and we also represent it by 
a dotted box here. Now this is in time domain. Same representation in frequency domain will now look like this. All other things we have discussed, just this part, the mutual induced uh, voltage, it will now be J omega M I2. So we, we just show here di dt is rep represented by j omega i. So di dt will be j omega i multiplied by this m. So it is be written as j omega m i2. And here uh, it will be written as j omega m i1. And this is also I try to draw it in a box. So I don't forget when I uh, writing the equations. So this I uh, encourage you to do the same. And I will strongly recommend that you watch this video 13.2 which has discussed uh, mutual induction in great details and derivation of the formulas also. Okay, so now let's solve this example 13.2. For the circuit shown in figure, find the ratio of the output voltage across 400 ohm resistors. The output voltage here is V2 to the source voltage, so source voltage is V1, so we have to find the ratio of V2 and V1 using express using phasor notation, so that means we have to convert this circuit into frequency domain or phasor domain. Okay, so let's go towards solution. Uh, this is the input voltage, 10 cos 10 TV. And if you compare it with the standard formula, uh, Vm cos omega t plus 5, then from here we can see that omega is 10. So we write or note down that omega is 10 radians. And then we convert uh, the time domain thing. So the input voltage was 10 cos 10 t. In phasor domain, it will become capital V1 and the magnitude vm this magnitude vm so it will be 10 and angle 0 because phi here is 0 so 10 uh, angle 0 will be in phasor domain we already discussed that l will be represented by j omega l so in this case the this uh, mutual inductance is 9 henry so 9 henry will be written as j into omega that is 10 from here and multiply by 9 so j is 90 ohms and same way uh, we have to convert the 1 henry and 100 henry and so the phasor domain circuit will now become like this this voltage in phasor form resistance remains same this one j omega l so j omega uh, omega is 10, L is 1, so it will become J10 ohm and similarly this one J omega L, so omega is 10 and L is 100, so it will become J1000 ohm or J1 kilo ohm is the same thing. The voltage becomes in capital and the two currents also becomes in a capital form. And we have to find the ratio of the output V2 and input V1. Okay, so this is circuit. I have just uh, draw, drawn it a little elongated so I can write the value of mutual inductance here. Okay, now the, the this is the general uh, equation or the general pattern that we discussed that we have to write j omega m i2 here and j omega m i1 here but we have to first of all determine the polarity so let's see the first one if you see this current uh, sorry we uh, from uh, first let's see this current this current is entering non-dotted terminal so as we have discussed in the previous video that if the current enters a non-dotted terminal then the non-dotted terminal of the other circuit 
will become positive. So this is the non-dotted terminal, so we'll write a positive sign and therefore the top will be negative sign, so we put a negative sign here. So this is uh, due to I1 and then the value uh, J omega M I2 says J omega is 10 or rather here it has written J omega M is already written so J90 so J90 into I2 so J90 into I2 so this is the value of the induced voltage in the primary side similarly now let's see the secondary side in the secondary side this current is now entering at the dotted terminal therefore the dotted terminal of the second circuit will have positive so we write positive or put positive sign at the top and negative sign at the bottom and again uh, we just plug in the value of j omega i1 so j90 i1 so it will be like become like this okay so this is uh, how we have completed the circuit and now we'll write the equations. So we take loop one and by KVL we start from one corner. I start from left corner. Negative sign, so we'll write negative sign and the value of the voltage 10 angle zero, so 10 angle zero. Then I1 into one or one into I1, the resistance and then the voltage across this j10 into i1 so j10 into i1 and now since we have the minus sign first going from here we can see the minus sign so we'll write minus j90 i2 and now <coughs> we can collect the light terms so we, we collected the i1 terms and then i2 terms and this moves on the constant moves on the right hand side so this is our equation number one uh, for the mesh 1. Uh, let's move to mesh 2 or loop 2. I again will start from the left corner. Now this is a negative sign so we'll take negative sign here and then J90 I1 is the voltage induced so we'll write J90 I1. Then since this current is touching this inductor here first so that will become positive. So while we are going from here, we'll see positive first. So we'll write positive sign. So positive, then this term of J multiplied by I2. So J thousand I2. And then again, when we are going from here to this place, this becomes positive first. So positive 400 I2 is equal to zero. And again, we can arrange this. Uh, the I terms and then I2 terms equal to zero. So this is our second equation. Now <clears throat> what we need to find is uh, we have to we can we need to find the value of currents I1 and I2 from here we can solve. Now uh, this the best way is to write it in the determinant form. So we have written it in the determinant form the I1 terms and I1 terms from here, I2 terms and I2 terms from here, then I1, I2 and the constant voltage is 10, 0 and 0 here. So this is, uh, we have written in the matrix form. And now let's find the uh, determinant delta. So we'll solve this and I'm sure you know, so we'll just cross multiply and so we multiply this by this minus multiplication of these two and you can use your calculator to solve or I have just tried to uh, solve it manually. So multiply this by this, multiply this by this and like this you know. So <clears throat> anyway I'm sure you can find out. And from here the final answer is minus 1500 plus j 5000 uh, this is in rectangular form we can also write it in polar form so 5220 uh, angle 106.7 so this is the value of delta okay so we were up to this point we have found the value of delta now 
again just remember that we have to find the ratio of voltage v2 over v1 now to find v2 we need to find i2 so there is no need of calculating i1 if we just calculate find i2 then i2 multiplied by 400 will give us v2 and v1 is already given here so we can find the ratio so for uh, finding i2 we just find delta 2 so we replace the second column by this voltage by replacing this and solving the answer is j900 or this can be written in polar form as 900 angle plus 90 so <coughs> we have found the two deltas and now i2 is delta 2 over delta so delta 2 from here and delta so the answer is 0 0.172 angle minus 16.7 ampere so we found i2 and now the v2 is 400 multiplied by i2 400 multiplied by i2 so multiplying this the V2 is 68.8 angle minus 16.7 and now the ratio V2 over V1 plugging in the value of V2 from here and the value of V1 from here the answer is 6.88 angle minus 16.7 degrees. So this is uh, how you solve this type of a problem. Okay, the, the practice problem says that we have to for the circuit given, write just the mesh, mesh equations, appropriate mesh equations for the left mesh and the right mesh. So it has not mentioned about uh, phasor, so there is no need of converting this into phasor, we'll just keep it as it is. This is the input voltage, we have to write a mesh equation here and we have to write a mesh equation here, but keep in mind that the induced voltage we have to take into account. So uh, let's first of all find the induced voltage on the left hand side. Because of this current there will be induced voltage which will be called M di2 by dt and the direction will be since this current is entering the dot therefore the dot end or the lower end will be positive so we have marked it positive and the upper end is negative. So this is how you write the sign. Similarly, in this case, dot is entering, uh, the current is entering the non-dotted terminal. Therefore, non-dotted end will be positive. So, there will be positive at the upper side and negative at the lower side. And now, uh, just write the equation. Mesh 1, from here, we are going from again from this corner. So, minus 20, minus 20 e raised to the power minus 100 t plus 3i1, so plus 3i1, plus this L into L di dt, so L di1 dt, and then the minus sign is coming first from here, so minus m di2 dt. So this is the first equation. Now we plug in the values of L and m in the equation. So L is 0 0.002, that is 2 millihenry, and m from here is 3 millihenry, so 3 millihenry is 0 0.003 and uh, di2 by dt, this has di1 by So this is the first equation that we got and exactly same way from mesh 2, we again starting from here, this corner, so minus sign first, so m di1 by dt minus m di1 by dt, then is the L, so L di2 by dt because we are in the second uh, loop so i2 and plus this uh, 10i2 so plus 10i2 equal to 0 here also we plug in the values m is 0 0.03 l is 0 0.05 in this case on the right hand side so this is uh, our second equation we collect the right terms so this is how it is written in the book. So these are the two equations that we get. So I hope this gives you an understanding of how to solve this type of a problem. Thank you.